Hey everyone, welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star. Today is Monday, February 6th. Because it's a Monday, that means it's time for What Sold on eBay! Just like every week, we're going to start with the plush. And I do show you each and every plush that sells every week. And then I pull out highlights of our other sales. It's usually Bolo brands or really good bread and butter brands for you guys to be on the lookout for. Uh, once in a while, there's Bolos, and sometimes I put in our mistakes or our poops to show you so you can learn from our mistakes and you don't have to make them. Before we get started with this cow you're looking at, if you're new here or you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up as you're listening today. And if you would like to learn more about reselling or just network with some really great resellers in a positive atmosphere, Join our Facebook group, Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. Let's start with the Chick-fil-A mascot. So this guy came in a wholesale lot. Um, I don't know that I would actually like source these as one-offs unless they were like a quarter uh, or in a bag with other plush or a wholesale. They do sell fast. The Chick-fil-A cows sell very quickly. They just don't sell for very much. I used to get them in little groupings, like at the bins, I'd find like eight, and then I could do like little lots of four of different ones. So if you can get them cheap enough, or if they come in a wholesale lot, or you get a bunch and you can bottom them up, um, they're worth it. They do sell pretty quickly, just not for very much. Next up, oh, he shipped first class. I forgot to tell you that, but I mean how tiny he is, clearly. Wild Republic Timberwolf. Also from a lot, so he was about a dollar. I talk about Wild Republic all the time. It's a really good brand that makes some realistic looking animals. And the prices, depending on the animal and the size, can range from, you know, $12 on up to $40 and $50 sometimes. This one had writing on the tag, which I just disclosed. He sold for $10 on a best offer. Shipped first class. Here is another Wild Republic. This is an elephant and this lion. And I'm going to tell you why I'm showing them together. Because one buyer purchased both the elephant, which is also Wild Republic, and this lion, which is Animal Land. Um, generic brand. Very generic brand, but it came in a wholesale lot, so it got listed. And you can see here that we put lion at first before the brand, which is something I always recommend doing if it's a poopy brand or an unknown brand or generic, put your what it is up front. Um, like I do sell Walmart Faded Glory plus size jeans. I would put women's plus size jeans size and then like Faded Glory at the end of the title. Um, your titles should always be like most important to least important. So keep that in mind when you're listing. Anyway, she paid $26.23 for the two animals, and they did not weigh a pound even together, so I just used one of the bigger poly bags we have on hand and put them in there together, and they shipped first class. And then the last plush that we sold last week was this Pittsburgh Pirates parrot. He's been around for some time. I got him for $0.50 cents back when at Goodwill. He was from a special high mark event they had at the, the baseball field, <laughs> the place downtown where the Pirates play. <laughs> I don't do sports, but this is a huge sports city. We have the Pirates, the Penguins, and the Steelers. Um, so I find this stuff all the time, and I do well with it, whether it's shirts, hats, plushies, you name it. He had damage on his eyes, so I did price him a little lower than I normally would have. And that might be why he took so long to sell. Um, but he did sell for $13.12 and he shipped first class. Now we're going to look at these Levi's 580s. I took a best off for $21 on these. These are women's plus size. So this is something I would normally start at $30, but it is on sale for $26.24. And then I took a best offer of $21. If you have been watching... And following along our What Sold videos this year, starting in January, we started running 30% off sales 
uh, just to try to get sales moving. Sales were very slow for us. We had a lot of stale items on the back end that were clearancing out and we are running bigger sales. But keep in mind, we price high. We price high. So when we comp, we price on the high end and we add 25% to that, but to the listing price. And that way we can run 20% off sales normally around the clock and it's still the exact price we wanted. For example, if I comp these Levi's 580 bootcut jeans, oh, I would probably just comp Levi's 580 plus size because typically plus size will sell for more. So you wanna make sure when you're comping plus size or big and tall or anything special like that, button fly, anything special, you wanna make sure that you type that into your search because those are things that are going to make them worth more. And you don't want to be looking at what non-plus size 580s go for when you comp. But let's say these comp uh, around 25 to 30 is what people sell them for. Well, clearly I want mine for 30 because I go on the high end. I list them at 37.49. When they go 20% off, they'll be 29.99. And that's the exact price I want. So even though it appears to be on sale, and feeds into that psychological need of buyers to have things on sale and get things at a discount. It also helps the algorithm. Uh, allegedly, you do get pushed up in the searches if you are running sales. It does all of that, but it's still at the starting price I wanted. And now I have wiggle room for offers and or to run bigger sales. So I can do 25 or 30% off and I'm still not coming far below what I really wanted. And I still have some wiggle room. Now, if I had listed these right at 30, what I wanted, and I wanted to run any sales, even 30, even 20% off would have put these at 26 if I didn't want it that deeply discounted to begin with. So I hope all of that makes sense. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. I'm going to do some videos later this week on um, clearancing, perceived value, loss leaders, and um, talk a little more in depth. But I just really wanted to explain that because a lot of folks don't understand how we can run 30% off and do best offers. It's because we price high enough to have room to do all of that. The cost of shipping is also built in because we offer free shipping. That's another thing that buyers like. All the big box stores, Walmart, Amazon, all of them have free shipping. So that's probably the way to go. That's probably what buyers expect. I know there's a lot of sellers that don't like to do free shipping. Um, it is, you know, there's two camps of thought. I kind of think if it's what everyone else is doing, the big box stores, it's probably um, the right way to go. And I do know as far as that psychology of selling that I talked about, running sales, allowing offers, and giving free shipping are three things that immediately trigger something in a buyer's brain psychologically that they're getting a deal they're getting one over on you they're getting something special they're getting money off so i'll talk more in depth later this week about that um i just wanted to quickly address that as we go through here and show you these prices so these would normally be 30 dollars in normal times sales are slow folks don't have money i'm not racing to the bottom i am not lowering the price of my items, 580s are worth 30 bucks. So instead of lowering prices, I can do offers and I can do sales, okay? Don't race to the bottom, don't lower your sales, unless it's clearance or poop items, which we'll talk about later in the week. Next up, we have some Lucky Brands. These would normally be a $25 start that I would take like a $20 offer on. So with the 30% off, they've sold for um, 1968 on a best offer. Also keep in mind too that our cost of goods is really low. We get most of our items, um, especially bread and butter ones like I'm showing you here for 99 cents. So we can, we can, we have a little more playroom I think too. If we paid $5 for our lucky jeans, I'm not gonna let them go for 1987. In fact, I probably wouldn't even thrift them. My way of thrifting in Pennsylvania is completely different than it was in Florida. Um, I really couldn't get jeans out there for less than five bucks. So I did a lot of thread up boxes out there. I really wasn't sourcing plush unless it was wholesale. And I was leaving a lot behind. Out here, I can get more volume, more bread and butter filler items because it's so cheap and there's such an abundance and we can really get so much. 
I feel like I talk so passionately about this stuff, but I really do love reselling. And I have to say, now that we're back in Pennsylvania and we're back to our roots, so to speak, this volume sourcing and volume listing and volume selling and just low cost of goods, we get like 60% profit on most items. Um, it's brought back the excitement and the love of the job. I'm enjoying thrifting more. I've always liked listing because I'm that weirdo that likes to list. Photos are okay as long as I'm watching a movie, but yeah, I am very passionate about this. I do love to resell. I love to talk about our strategies and how we price and how we run sales. I love to talk about all of it. I love to teach. So really don't ever hesitate to leave a comment. I do respond to everybody eventually. Sometimes I get kind of behind, but I do make it a point to go in a couple times a week and answer questions and respond to people. Also in the Facebook group, you can always tag me in a post and I'll, I'll respond to you probably a little more quickly. So this Caribbean Joe Hawaiian shirt and this worldwide sportsman vintage fishing shirt showing them to you together because again, this was another bulk buy. We had quite a few of those last week. I love those. We had two big ones on Poshmark, um, one in January and one recently. This morning, we had a huge one we shipped out. I haven't pulled the items to show you because they were some of our poop we were clearing out. Um, it was some shirts I priced at seven bucks just to get rid of them um, and get our money back. And again, I will really get into that in depth in another video. Um, but he bought seven shirts and that's kind of the idea. Like when you clearance things out real low, you're hoping folks will buy more than one. So he bought seven shirts and he lives in Ohio. So he's right next door. We boxed him up real nice with a thank you card and some tissue paper. Um, he spent like, I want to say 45 or 50 on all seven shirts. And it cost $8 to ship. So it was a little bit more than a padded or than a flat rate envelope, but a little less than a padded flat to ship seven shirts to make our money back, plus a little bit on items that were three and four years old. So um, again, that was exciting. And then we had a woman who bought two shirts and a pair of shorts clearance items again seven dollar items but she bought three pieces and they were extra small t-shirts and a pair of small shorts which probably explains why they were so old and that they sat around for four years until i clearanced them because they were extra small um but they were so small i was able to get them into one of our plastic bread bags and then the um flat rate envelope so that was only 760 to ship three items um, and then this gentleman bought two. These weren't clearance quite so low. This was $25.18 for the two. And these two didn't weigh a pound either. They they were close. They were 15.8 ounces. So they went in a poly bag together. And then um, the other bulk items or bundles didn't have to go priority. Um, but yeah, that's always the hope when you clearance things out. And then you can also set up sales in your store too, not just this strike through markdown. You can set up um, sales with parameters. I think they have a video on it. I can have pop up at the end for you. And if I don't have a video on it, I will make one for you guys. But you can set up like we have, if they buy two ties, they can get a third tie at half off. We have if a buyer spends $25 or more, they get like an extra 20% off. And then our parameters within that are set so that the items have to be less than 25 so that they're purchasing two of our bread and butter items to get that discount. They can't just buy one shirt and get it. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I'll have that pop up at the end for you and maybe do another video on that as I revisit all of these topics this week on clearancing and perceived value and running sales and all of that. Okay, next up. Levi's Strauss. So this is the low-end Levi's. And these are typically the ones that you can probably find at um, Walmart. They're Levi's Signature. They're boys. And I got them in a lot. I think they were like a dollar. So I don't like to source kids' clothes, really. I don't think there's enough money in it. I know pe some people do well. It's just not my cup of tea or my wheelhouse. But if, you know, sometimes I get them in wholesale boxes or thread up. Sometimes I'll walk past something in the thrift and know it's a good brand or Disney shirt or something and I'll grab it. These sold for 14 on a best offer. And I believe that they were first class. Yes. Okay. 
This is a good brand. Keep your eyes peeled for Citizens of Humanity. It is unfortunately one of the brands that um, has gone down over time, a victim of that race to the bottom, but it is what it is. I start them at 30 now. These were on sale, took the best offer, $22.99 out the door. Buckle is a good brand, especially if you can find Buckle Men's, because men's clothing, you can always start for a little bit more. Took the best offer, 30 on these. I usually start these around 40, um, but getting 30 for them is good. I paid, I think, $2 or maybe $2.50 for these. They were half off. And they're good size. They're size 38. Um, I mentioned that earlier about the bundle we sold to the buyer of the two t-shirts and pair of shorts that were very small sizes. I guess I should add the comment to that. Smaller jean sizes do do really well. A lot of the Hollister and those Wanna Betta Butts and But I Love You jeans, those come in really small junior sizes and those do well. I feel like men's shirts, women's shirts, dresses, and other items that are smaller in size don't do as well. And interestingly enough, Keith had stumbled across an article last week that said something like 75% of Americans are considered overweight or overbeast, you know, by the medical people. So that should tell you that, yes, the bigger sizes are going to do better. Then we have these JMS bootleg jeans. These are a plus size. JMS is just my size. I would not thrift this unless it was new with tags. It is a good plus size brand. Um, if you can find it really low cost of goods, I'm talking like under a dollar um, or wholesale or in a stuff a bag sale or anything like that. Uh, but even for 99 cents, I'll usually even leave them behind. They were Kmart brand. I believe just my size was Kmart. But these were new with tags and only 99 cents. So I decided to go ahead and grab them. And they sold for $20 on a best offer. Um, so that, you know, that's new with tags. So that tells you why I leave the used ones behind. Um, but plus sizes are good. Good, good, good. And then we have this Arctic Men's Snow Pants. Y'all look out for this brand. Let me see. There it is. I'm going to show you the tag. Okay. These had wear and stains. And they still sold for $34.99. Um, they were listed for $40 originally, but again, 30% off. And then they sold as soon as they went on sale. Um, so I might have had them priced, you know, a little high, but we have offers on. We haven't had these for very long, um, but you can see here. So even with the minor wear and the staining near the hems, um, they still sold for $34.99. Now, had these been in really, really good condition, I might have started them higher, like maybe around $45, $50. Um, but I found them for $0.99, cents, believe it or not. This is not awesome. I mean, I don't normally find the Bolo brands for $0.99. Cents. Um, not often. I do. It happens and it's exciting when it happens, but usually it's just the bread and butter that I'm loading up on at that price. And then I get all of the really good brands I find for half off. Uh, we're very fortunate here. I mentioned that already, you know, just the way we thrift here is so much different. Um, and then in the summer months, we're going to go to the bins a few times as well and really, really load up on just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, this summer going into fall, so that next winter, we don't have to really source as much. You guys know we moved back in October. So we had to build up our money pile, our inventory, um, almost from scratch. We brought some unlisted stuff from Florida with us. But there's already been a couple of times where it was our day to go out and source. And the roads were icy. Or it was zero degrees. Or the wind chill factor. Or it was snowing. You know, we just didn't want to go out. So we stayed home and worked from our pile. So it is a good idea to have some back stock or some stock ready because you never know what's going to happen. Most of you know the story about how Keith and I, uh, right before shutdown, said we don't want a death pile anymore. We have too much in this house. We're, or, you know, not in this house. We 
had an attic where we kept it. It's not like we have it everywhere, but we had so much inventory. We were like, we have to list everything we have before we're allowed to go thrifting again. And we worked at it very diligently from the beginning of 2020, from January. That was like our New Year's goal. And two weeks before the world shut down, we got through all of our inventory. We went thrifting one time and then the world shut down and boy, did we have to get inventive that year. Um, and I don't ever want that to happen again. And then I also have to face that we live in a place where in the winter, there's going to be sometimes weeks at a time where we don't get to go out and source. Um, and that was how we had done it prior to moving to Florida. We would just get so much extra stuff in the summer and the fall box it up, wash it, dry it, box it up, you know, if you got room in a garage or an attic and just keep it up there. And then you can shop from yourself on the times you can't get out of the house. You know, and there's always the times when you go out too and you don't find a lot. So it's a good idea to have some on hand. So we'll be really scrolling it away this summer, but I have been talking a lot. <laughs> this is not have been a succinct video. Um, there's just a lot I wanted to talk about with you guys. I try to keep these what sold videos, you know, informative and talk about what we actually sold. But I also like to tell you how we sold it, why we sourced it, and all of the other things that go into how we run our business um, so that I can help you more than just look at what we sold. I want to help you guys to be successful. I want everyone to be successful. I love to teach. I love to help. And you know there is room for all of us up here at the top. So... I like to extend my hand and help people give them a hand up. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, hit the thumbs up. If you would, please, it does help our channel. And I will see you guys next time. Hey, go be productive. Go make some money. And as always, thanks for watching. Y'all are the best. Bye.